Before we get to the details of aversion therapy, let's be clear on the distinction between an aversion and an allergy. An aversion has a psychological basis, an allergy has a physiological basis. So an aversion is a complete dislike for something with a psychological cause. So in terms of using aversion therapy as a behavioural modification technique, it uses the principles of classical conditioning by pairing an aversive stimulus such as electric shocks or nausea inducing drugs with the maladaptive behaviour that's been targeted in order to reduce that maladaptive behaviour. Aversion therapy, due to tighter modern ethical constraints, is not as prevalent as it once was, but it's still used. In the past, it has been used to treat homosexuality, sexually deviant, deviant children, and is still used to deal with addictive behaviour such as smoking, alcoholism, gambling, violence, etc., and bad habits such as nail biting. So let's go through a practical example of where a smoker has chosen to use aversion therapy to create an aversion to the, a maladaptive, addictive habit of cigarette smoking. So this would involve pairing of electric shocks, the unconditioned stimulus, with the sight or smell or even smoking a cigarette, which is originally the neutral stimulus. This would occur repeatedly until it got to the point where even the sight or smell of a cigarette would reflexively evoke a negative emotional response, i.e. an aversion has been created. So let's, using the language of classical conditioning, outline the three stages of conditioning for aversion therapy in this case. So in the baseline stage, a sight or a smell or even smoking evokes no aversive response, it's neutral. An electric shock will reflexively evoke pain and anxiety. So the electric shock is an unconditioned stimulus which reflexively evokes an unconditioned response. No learning, no conditioning is required for this relationship to occur. During the acquisition phase, we repeatedly pair the two previously unrelated stimulus of cigarettes and electric shocks and this will reflexively evoke the unconditioned response, pain and anxiety. We know the aversion therapy has been successful when we get to the point where we can simply present the conditioned stimulus on its own, the thought or sight of a cigar cigarette, which will reflexively evoke a negative emotional response such as anxiety. Thus, an aversion has been created. Here's a relatively recent application of aversion therapy where they've used it to cure childhood internet addiction via shock therapy. So can I encourage you to pause the video and actually have a crack at outlining what occurs during the three stages using the language of classical conditioning in terms of the neutral, unconditioned and conditioned stimulus as well as the unconditioned and conditioned response. You can access these slides by accessing my SlideShare account or go to my website www.epsychvce.com. So in terms of the baseline stage of this scenario, surfing on the web evokes no aversive response, so therefore it is a neutral stimulus. And just like we had before, electric shocks reflexively evokes a pain and anxiety response, so they're unconditioned, no learning is required. During the acquisition phase, we pair repeatedly these previously unrelated stimuli, i.e. internet activity and electric shocks, which reflexively evokes that pain and anxiety response. We know the aversion therapy has been successful when the child merely thinks of internet activity and it evokes a negative emotional response, i.e. anxiety. In terms of the limitations of aversion therapy, We've got some major ethical issues, even when the patient consents to being subjective to physical or psychological pain. Can it create an overgeneralization in the case of aversions to alcoholic beverages, i.e. the patient can overgeneralize their aversion to all types of liquids, including water, 
obviously that's going to create health issues. Extinction of the aversion can actually occur quite easily, particularly for social drugs like alcohol or smoking where we're regularly exposed to that type of aversive stimulus. All it would take would be one puff, one drink of alcohol and the aversion's been extinguished without that frequent pairing of say the painful stimulus, electric shocks with the conditioned stimulus, the sight and smell of alcohol or cigarettes. Thank you.